everybody. Uh, let me start with my outrage and sorrow for the death of three brave U.S. troops in Jordan and for the other troops who were wounded. The President and I will not tolerate attack on U.S. forces, and we will take all necessary actions to defend the U.S. and our troops. Now, at this important time, I'm glad to be back uh, at the Pentagon. I feel good and am recovering well, but still recovering. Uh, and I appreciate all the, the good wishes that I've received thus far. And welcome back, Mr. Secretary General. Thank you. It's great to see you. It's a pleasure to get to host, uh, host uh, you here today. You know, over the past three years, we've worked closely together. And I want to thank you for your leadership. And you've heard me say that a number of times, and uh, it is it is heartfelt. I have really watched you lead up, lead the uh, alliance through some very uh, challenging times. You've kept NATO united and resolute through the most serious threat to transatlantic security since the end of the Cold War. Over the nearly two years since Putin's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine, NATO has grown stronger and more united than ever. NATO became even more capable last year when Finland joined. And I'm very pleased that the Turkish parliament voted last week for Sweden to join NATO as well. And we're looking forward to welcoming Sweden to NATO soon. Now, we'll talk today about ways to further strengthen transatlantic security as we look to next month's defense ministerial meeting in Brussels and to the 75th anniversary summit that we'll host here in Washington later this year. Deterrence and defense will always be job number one for NATO. And we've, always, and we've made excellent progress on implementing the decisions that our leaders made at the Vilnius Summit. With our approved regional plans, we're ensuring a theater-wide, multi-domain deterrent. And if any adversary challenges that deterrent, the Alliance is ready to fight and to win. So I look forward to some frank discussions with you and our valued allies about what we need to strengthen our collective deterrence and defense. That includes reaching and maintaining the levels of defense spending and production that we need to follow through on our commitments from Vilnius. That's vital so that we can continue to support Ukraine and to replenish our own stocks of weapons and munitions. NATO is the most powerful and successful alliance in history, and we're going to keep it that way. So, Mr. Secretary General, we've got a lot to discuss today. And I look forward to that discussion. And over to you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Secretary Austin Deloitte. It's uh, good to see you again, and uh, and thank you for your warm uh, welcome. And it's uh, great to see that you are doing uh, well. And I look forward to continuing to working uh, with you. Um, let me start by expressing my condolences uh, for the U.S. troops killed and uh, wounded uh, in uh, Jordan. Uh, um, this demonstrates once again uh, the risk uh, that uh, uh, servicemen are uh, exposed to when they uh, stand up for our values and, uh, and uh, take part in missions and operations where we protect freedom uh, and uh, the values we all uh, believe uh, in. Uh, Iran continues to destabilize the region. This includes backing terrorists who attack our ships in the Red Sea and the U.S. is leading international efforts to end these uh, attacks. Uh, we will, as you mentioned, uh, also discuss uh, Russia's war aggression against uh, Ukraine, uh, and the war is now nearing uh, the two-year uh, mark. Uh, the, situa the situation on the battlefield is challenging, uh, but uh, NATO allies uh, are uh, providing uh, unprecedented support to uh, Ukraine, and it is important that we continue to do so. Uh, our support to Ukraine is not charity. It, it is an investment in our own security because uh, the world will become more dangerous if uh, President Putin uh, wins in uh, Ukraine. And this is also closely watched in China and Beijing. Uh, so that makes it even more important that we uh, continue to support uh, Ukraine. And therefore, I also welcome uh, the leadership of you and President Biden. Um, uh, in ensuring that we uh, are uh, going to continue to support uh, Ukraine. Uh, we will also discuss uh, how to continue to adapt uh, the alliance in the future. 
uh, NATO is now holding uh, Steadfast Defender, our biggest military exercise in decades, with 90,000 troops, including many from the United States, demonstrating how NATO has adapted uh, and how we have increased the readiness uh, of our forces and how we also have deployed more forces uh, to the eastern part of the uh, alliance. Uh, we also uh, um, see growing competition with China. Uh, Beijing is not an adversary, but China is conducting a major military build-up, increasingly aligning with Russia and bullying its neighbors, not least uh, Taiwan. And all of this impacts our security. So when we face a more dangerous world, we need to invest more in uh, security. I uh, commend you for your leadership on these issues. And I welcome the fact that European allies are now stepping up. Um, uh, all allies across Europe and Canada have increased defence spending, added 450 billion extra US dollars for defence, demonstrating that they take this seriously. And I look forward to the defence ministerial meeting next uh, week uh, and also the summit in Washington uh, uh, in July, where we're going to celebrate the 75th anniversary of this alliance, but also um, work uh, and agree on important decisions on how to continue to ensure that NATO is the most uh, successful alliance in history. So thanks so much, uh, Roy. It's great to see you again. Well, welcome back to the Pentagon, Secretary General. So look forward to a great discussion. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Press, for leaving. Thank you, Press, for leaving now.